Cadillac has dubbed their new infotainment system Q, and uh, in our particular XTS model, uh, it combines this large touchscreen navigation system here, an infotainment unit, with this enormous LCD in the dash that replaces the entire gauge cluster. So let's take a look at these pieces separately. First, we're going to take a look at the gauge cluster, then we'll move over to the infotainment and navigation unit. Over here on the steering wheel, <clears throat> the system is controlled by this cluster of switches here. Uh, we have side to side, up and down, push to select, track up down, volume buttons here. On this side, we have the voice recognition, we have cruise control, we have our phone off, heated steering wheel, and our collision control, uh, collision alert, I should say, button here. Um, this is very much like uh, the other collision warning systems in the industry. It uses a camera that's up behind the rearview mirror to monitor traffic in front of you and then vibrates your seat and alerts you via this display here as well as the heads up display in the vehicle to let you know that a collision is impending. Okay, so looking at this instrument cluster, um, what Cadillac has done is they've replaced everything with this LCD and they've separated into several quadrants. So over here we have our speed limit info and these are all adjustable. So you can see we have uh, speed warning, we have cruise control information, we have essentially gauge duplication, tire pressure, um, and trip computer, etc. Um, we have our audio section here, and this can also be your phone or your navigation. Um, if we were doing turn-by-turn -turn navigation, the latest turn information would be displayed here. And if we move on to this third quadrant over here, we have our trip computer as well as some additional gauges like timer, turn arrow, uh, distance to destination. We can also have our speed limit shown up there as well. Uh, over here in the upper left hand corner we have a fixed screen which is a sort of a snapshot view of our navigation so that's not zoomable that's just the only zoom that it ever gets and then over here we have our usual fuel meter and uh, this section of the display shows things like your high beams on and off your cruise control what your cruise control would currently be set to whether your headlights are on etc as well as a compass direction <laughs> Now, unlike products like Jaguar and Land Rover's LCD gauges, which uh, really only have one look and feel to them, this display can be customized uh, to a decent extent. Uh, we can go back to a more traditional three-gauge arrangement here. As you can see, the animation is very good on this particular system. Um, and again, in this particular setup, we have uh, our usual navigation. We can convert to uh, a little uh, map in that screen. We can have just a regular needle look. Over here we have our trip computer additional and additional gauges. And then on this side we have our infotainment options, phone and navigation instructions. Now going back to this particular screen, to the settings and changing the display layout again, you can see there is a third look here. And uh, that was what we were on before. Um, there is a simple layout, which um, removes a lot of the information. So now we only have audio on this side and we only have our fuel gauge over here. Um, we have the balance layout, which we've seen, and we have the performance layout, which uh, is a little bit interesting. I'm not quite clear why that exists in an XTS, which is really not a performance vehicle at all. As you can see, we get a tachometer over here, we get our speedo over here, um, and uh, they've sort of moved all the other options here. So we have audio, phone, we have our navigation, um, and our vehicle information in this particular area. Um, and you can toggle through the various aspects of the car, and it has these little animations which are pretty cute. Um, and then the other area is this little window here where you can have your map, or you can have your speed, or just the needle look. This particular display, thankfully, does not run seemingly on the same software or same systems as the infotainment system that's in the center of the dash. So even though the system in the center of the dash has crashed on us four times this week, fortunately this display has never crashed. So the portions of this display that pull information from that other display, so like this navigation uh, screen here, or uh, if we're on this other option here and we're looking at our, our audio system information, when the main system in the dash crashes, these particular displays freeze and are non-responsive, but the rest of the gauges do function as you would expect. Moving back over to our center console, this is where I'm going to remind you that if you're not viewing this in uh, high definition on YouTube, then go ahead and click that 1080p button because uh, you'll be able to see an awful lot more if you do. First thing to note with this system is much like Ford's products and BMW's products, they've gone USB port crazy, which I really love. 
Um, so there are two USB ports in the center console, and then there's one hidden in this little cubby right here at the back. Now, these ports all provide enough power to power and charge my iPad 3, which I think is great. Um, and you can have all three devices connected at the same time. Uh, you can do voice recognition on all three devices as well, uh, which is kind of interesting. But the way the system deals with this is it sort of merges all three devices together. So if we were to go into this audio screen here, and uh, you can see right now we're on XM Satellite Radio. If we hit the media button, um, we move on to the iPhone here. Um, if we browse the media and we had more than one device plugged in at the same time, you would see duplicates if you had all my eye devices plugged in at the same time because all my eye devices are synced, so they're all duplicates of one another. Uh, but if you and your husband or wife or kids or whatever had multiple different devices, an Android device, a USB device, an iDevice, device, et cetera, and you had different music on them, you could plug them in and then you'd see all the playlists and songs as if they were on one device. It's kind of a handy feature. Um, if we go back to the home screen, you can see uh, we have our usual options of climate, phone, nav, rear climate control, which is kind of interesting because this one does have a three-zone climate control system. Uh, we move along to the next screen, and we have access to Pandora, uh, XM Weather. This is not a smartphone app. Pandora is a smartphone app. It requires Pandora on your phone. And we have access to our OnStar features as well. Now, I don't have particularly oily hands. My hands tend to be very dry. So this touchscreen uh, system and these touch-sensitive buttons here don't really seem to respond that well unless I press pretty hard and linger uh, my finger there on the buttons for a short while. Uh, and everything is touch sensitive. So the heated seats, there we go, um, the cooled seats, um, the climate control buttons, etc. They're all these touch buttons as well, very much like uh, Ford and Lincoln's latest products. Now this system is a first generation system for Cadillac and there are a few bugs. As I've said, the system has crashed on us four times in a week and under 700 miles. Um, the system also has um, some responsiveness issues sometimes. If you're pinching to zoom, which is a nice feature, then, I mean, it takes a while for it to respond. Um, and uh, on the navigation side, this screen is kind of narrow. So the way that they've laid this out, we have these direct access buttons at the bottom. So, I mean, if, I'm, if I want to store the location that I'm at right now, I just press and hold, and all of a sudden it has stored North Rollins Road in Millbrae. And uh, you can recall that just by hitting that button. You can store playlists on your iPod, songs on your iPod, XM satellite stations. Um, all manner of things can be stored in these program buttons, which is very much like BMW's iDrive. But this nav screen is fairly narrow. Um, and if you're in a city that has um, building information, we're not, but we were in downtown San Francisco earlier, and the building information tends to hide the, uh, the roads. So um, we're going to choose our heading up view. So you can see the, uh, the 2D view of the system. Um, the voice instructions work very well in this system, and you can voice command your iPod, which is quite nice. Um, you can also have access to the usual phone voice commands uh, that you would expect. Um, and we expect a few more apps, we're told, from General Motors. They expect to add more smartphone integration apps in this system as time goes on. Um, the system is not quite as intuitive as Ford's MyTouch system. Um, it's not quite as snazzy as BMW's iDrive, but I think the system is more intuitive than Audi's MMI, um, and it's definitely better than Mercedes Command. Um, it's more fully featured than Volvo's Census, and Acura's latest systems really just leave an awful lot to be desired. Um, the only aggravating part of this system, again, is that crashing. Uh, you know, as I said, we did, did crash four times on us. However, on the flip side of that, I'm not trying to defend GM here necessarily, but on the flip side of that, Ford MyTouch was really buggy in its first uh, uh, version of the software, and Ford was able to change that over time. So we expect the next revision of this system uh, to improve. Um, now, as you can see, the system's other feature uh, is now apparent, and that is that it has a proximity sensor. So as you can see, the display now has uh, a little bit more room. So the map has gotten a little bit larger, and if I move my hand closer to the display, you can see that this row of icons and uh, this row of icons here now appear. And if I remove my hand after a short while, they will pop back again. Overall, Q performs very well. It integrates very well with all of my latest eye devices. Uh, and I really couldn't ask for more than that, being the geek that I am. This system is very competitive. 
with the likes of Audius MMI and uh, Volvo Census and uh, some of those other systems in this segment. I do rate this just a notch behind iDrive in terms of ease of use, although this uh, you know 11 inch LCD dash right here uh, is very, very, very uh, attractive looking. Um, this is easily the best LCD disco dash that there is in the market. The Jaguar and the Land Rover LCD dash arrangements just don't offer this array of customization uh, that the Cadillac does. So on the infotainment and gadget front, uh, the Cadillac XTS receives a very high score.